it's Maddie. So, um, I just filmed a school story time, so I look the exact same. But I wanted to film another one, and this is one makes me a little bit nervous to put out um, because I do worry that I might get some judgment, but it's one that I do want to put out. So, here we go. We're going all the way back to when I was 14 and a freshman in high school. Um, so, let's, let's set the scene a little bit. Um, my brother, Carter, he's important in the story. He would have been nine. Um, there's this other kid. I honestly don't remember his real name, so we're going to call him Travis. And Travis was in sixth grade. So he was 12, 11, 12. Yes. Yes. And then my sister, Elizabeth, was, she's, she plays a minor role. We had to ride the bus and um, the, we were seated by like age order, so elementary in the front, middle school, high school. So Carter had a ride at the front, Travis kind of in the front area. It wasn't like super strict that we didn't have assigned seats. And then me and Elizabeth liked to sit at the back of the bus. At this point I had a cell phone, um, you know, music, all that, like have a good time. And this I actually had headphones in. And so this kid, Travis, I knew had been picking on my brother in the neighborhood. He's had like his friends. I lived in a neighborhood at this point and like they just weren't very nice to Carter and they had some issues, but I was like, oh, they're like boys, whatever. Like that's what my parents thought too. Like Carter, boys are like that age are just like girls that age. They have love hate relationships with a lot of their friends. Like we were like, okay. And even, you know, he was being kind of a butt, but we were like, they'll sort it out. Well, they never did. And it kind of just kept progressing and it was getting out of hand. And so like, um, Carter like could only like tried to just avoid them like it was just yeah not the best situation and ended up going a little more further than my parents had wanted so anyway we're on the bus chilling whatever basically Travis this morning decided to keep hurling insults at Carter just insulting him and when you're nine and a 12 year old's picking on you that's not super fun so this Carter, this kid just keeps insulting him. Carter gets really, really upset and ends up throwing it, his water bottle at him. So we had to take water bottles to school and it was like this plastic one. It was reusable though and it was full, but he threw it at him. And the kid jumped on Carter and punched him in the head repeatedly. So I am a very protective older sister. I always have been, I always will be. Elizabeth just turned 18 and I'm having to like really tone this back. So I'm very mama bear, I am very go in, mess a kid up, don't care, scare them, whatever. And I have never been violent with someone younger than me. I'm not really a violent person. Like growing up, I would never really hit my siblings and if I did, it was because they hit me. Last time I hit Carter, he did call me the B word, but like, he called me a B word. Like, no, you're too old for that, you, you know better. So anyway, we're on the bus. And I'm sitting back there with my headphones on. I have no idea Carter's being picked on. It's like a full-size bus. There's like a bunch of kids. And all of a sudden, I hear Carter screaming. And I knew it was his. And I sit up. And Elizabeth goes, oh, my God, that's Carter. And I threw my phone on the ground. And all the kids are standing in the aisle at this point. And I'm pretty sure the bus was stopped. I don't remember exactly why. Again, it's been like five years since this happened so I jump somehow I don't know how I did this because I'm not athletic there's all the kids in the aisle I climbed over all the seats and I didn't hit any kids and I get up there and Carter is in the seat crying and he's just sobbing and I was like what happened and all these kids are trying to tell me what's wrong I'm like what happened Carter I'm like I remember just being like shut up what happened and Carter just goes he punched me and pointed to this kid and this is where this was not fair and this was not okay and I would not recommend solving things with violence but I was 14 and someone had just beat the snot out of my nine-year-old little brother who was 12 no so I turn and they're holding this kid down and I was like he hit you and I just saw red like seeing Carter so upset and like he had been punched in the face and like in the head and then he hadn't broken his skin but he had just punched him repeatedly like on top of him punching him this is where I wasn't the best person but this is something I'll get to all that at the end so I turn and I punch him in the face 
slaps, I hit him back. <laughs> so it started with slaps, and I was like, don't hit my brother. And I was just so angry, and then ended up, like, letting him go, and he was pushing me off, and I, like, shoved him into the seat, and I was just so mad. I mean, they weren't holding him down. Like, as soon as I hit him, they let him go, but I was, like, being this kid, um, he was super skinny. We were about, like, we were the same height. Whew, get fired up talking about this. <laughs> So I like shove him into the seat and I honestly was hoping he would hit me back. Like I was just so mad. I was like someone hit me. And I was like if I think everyone was so scared at that point because if some other kid would have grabbed me I would have shoved him off. Like I was fucking livid. So then Carter and he was a pretty big nine year old. Like he's very tall. He's always been super skinny. But somehow I pick him up and carry him to the back of the bus. I'm like everyone sit down and I carry him to the back of the bus. And he's like, my backpack. And mind you, okay, I want to say before this, I am such a rule follower. I don't, you know, I don't do anything bad. Um, I was never tardy, like, good attendance, just, you know, yeah. <laughs> if I was sent to the office, it was for something good. <sighs> so I get Carter to the back of the bus. The bus is moving at this point. And, oh, I think we dropped off at the middle school. I don't I don't know I don't remember so um Carter's like my backpack's up there and I was like mm. so I walked while the bus was moving mind you we had a substitute bus driver this day and after I had hit the kid she was like y'all are gonna be in trouble and I was like obviously so much disrespect because she didn't do anything she didn't get up like after Carter had gotten beaten on and they removed the kid and I was up there she was like everybody just sit down and I was like no um so I go, I'm walking on this moving bus and I grab his backpack and she's like, you need to sit down. You're already in trouble. And I was like, yeah, what's me walking around on a moving bus? And everyone's just like. So, yeah. Um, and then <laughs> I get to the back. I have Carter's backpack. We're in like the very back seat of the bus. The one that's like for two people. Elizabeth's like. And I'm like, is my phone okay? Like it's sliding all over the bus floor now. So I end up grabbing my phone and I call my mom. Like, hey mom, so this kid just hit Carter on the bus. I'm gonna wait to get off at the elementary because they dropped off at the high school first. And I was like, I'm gonna wait to get off. Um, I think Elizabeth was off the bus at this point. I think they dropped off the middle schoolers. Yeah, I'm like, don't worry. Or maybe she hadn't, I honestly don't remember. Um, I was like, I'm gonna stay with him, but one of you guys need to come up to the elementary. Like, love you, bye. And then I'm comforting Carter. And Carter goes, you forgot to tell mom you hit the kid. And it's not that I wasn't wanting to tell her. It just, like, happened so fast. So I called her back, and I was like, by the way, I hit the kid back. <laughs> and she goes, Madeline. <laughs> and I was like, I'm on it. I was like, Mom, we're going to have to deal with this later because Carter's really upset. And she was like, okay. And I honestly, my parents had always told us if we got in trouble at school to be more afraid of the consequences at home than the consequences at school. So I was like, mm, they're probably going to take my phone. Like, I was really just at peace with whatever is going to happen. Like, didn't care. Um, so uh, I get off with Carter at the middle school. The bus driver, like, stops at the high school and is like, get off. And I was like, no. So we stop at the elementary. We get off. We walk in, and I walk in his principal's office, and I was like, Carter was just punched in the head on the bus repeatedly. Like, my dad's on his way. So my dad gets there um, right before school's about to start. My parents would stay home and get ready, and, like, we rode the bus to school kind of kind of dealio. We are like, one of the first houses picked up. So my dad gets there and is like, hi, guys. I'm like, hey, what's up? <laughs> And at this point, I'm still just angry, and I have so much adrenaline, and I'm just like, ah, like, fucking pissed. So, my dad, um, I had, like, two minutes until my school started by the time he got there, and he was like, oh, do you want me to go sign you in real quick so you're not, you know, in trouble? And I just looked at him, and I was like, Dad, I punched a kid in the face on the bus. What's a tardy at this point? And he just goes okay because like I said I never mm -mm. so I want to insert a little story here so there was one time in fourth grade that I forgot my homework and it was like five o'clock and I made my mom email the teachers to see if there was anyone from my grade there <laughs> and drive up to the school and let me pick up my homework and if I was ever gonna be tardy even by a couple minutes and like they were dropping me off at school in the past 
I always made them come in and sign me in. And so this is why my dad was just like, okay. <laughs> oh, I walk over, I walk my happy button to the office and a front office lady goes, oh, why are you late? Cause like they ask you and like they have to fill out this thing. And I was like, you'll find out in a little bit. <laughs> and she was like, what? And I was like, and I just walked my happy butt to class and I was like, hey, I'm late. Like, they're like, is it excused? And I was like, no, like I'm late. You're gonna figure out why in a little bit. And before lunch, this was everywhere. <laughs> Everyone was posting about it. There was no videos because everyone was like so shocked. Um, and like I said, he was in like the third row of the bus. So at the front. Um, <laughs> and everyone's coming up to me like, did you really hit someone? I was like, yeah. Like, what? What's it to you? Um, and they ended up like, it was an issue because Carter was at the elementary, he was at the middle school, and I was at the high school. So they ended up sitting us down or they call me in and Carter got two days of ISS for throwing his water bottle. Travis got two days of ISS and I got six weeks of alternative school. I want to say another thing. Um, I ended up only serving three weeks serving. I ended up only being there for three weeks because Carter and the other kid got the same punishments. My parents didn't think that was fair because the other kid I mean, what Carter did wasn't okay, but he, like, punched him in the head. And then for me to get six weeks of alternative school, like, they really just didn't feel like any of it was fair. And it kind of came down to each school making their own punishment. And my parents ended up, like, doing this, like, filling out this form, and it ended up being cut in half um, since it was my first time, like, going to alternative school. So. Because mine was unprovoked. <laughs> Um, so basically the way they treated it is that the kid insulted Carter, Carter made it physical, and then the kid reacted to Carter. And when I came up, the situation was diffused, not really, and I acted inappropriately for someone my age. I had someone younger than me, and it was not, um, okay, I guess. And what was really funny is that they let me go to school for two days. I'm just waiting for them to call me in, just sitting back. Like, everyone's like, oh, my God, like, she hit that kid. Like, oh, my God. Another, like, crucial point is that fights did not happen where we went to school. Um, or any kind of, like, big, I mean, no, this did not happen. Not fights, not pe kids yelling at each other. This did not happen. So this was a lot. <laughs> And some people were like, you're a coward, like, they already had it diffused, like, why'd you hit him? And I was like, someone punched my brother in the face, like, what do you mean? So they end up, he ends up, the vice principal ends up calling me in and is like, well, you're going to have six weeks of alternative school, like, you know, we have to call your parents in and have a whole meeting tomorrow morning and then, like, you're going to go. And I was like, why am I getting alternative school? And he's like, well, you're a threat to your classmates. You just let me go to class for two days. If I'm that big of a threat, what? So I call my mom and I was like, they just, you know, I just got out of the principal's office, which also we're not supposed to be in our, on our phones in school. I'm like in the hallway, like, yeah, got alternative school. Um, my mom was like, oh no. And I was like, my only regret is not hitting them harder. And the thing was like, my parents weren't mad at me. They understood like someone hit Carter. Of course I am going to react. And they were like, you know, they did talk to me and tell me that violence is not always going to be the answer when someone's violent first, but in this situation they understood why I did what I did and they weren't going to like reprimand me in any way. Um, so yeah, we went in and had this whole meeting. Carter was with us for some reason. I don't remember why. He was there and I ended up getting really pissed and really like, I don't want to go to alternative school. Like I had eight weeks left in my freshman year and was like, I don't want to go there for six weeks. And, um, yeah, they're like, well, Madeline hit him really hard. And, like, um, like, Madeline. And, like, they were treating mine like a separate incident. Like, they kept just being like, well, Madeline went up and hit a kid unprovoked. And I was like, what? <laughs> and the vice principal just kept being like, well, we wouldn't give a, a primary schooler the same punishment we'd give a, you know, freshman in high school. And my mom was like, stop using that. Like, None, no one's in elementary, like, no one's in kindergarten. That's what he kept saying, like, his daughters. And we were like, no one's in kindergarten. Why are you saying that? I just want to say that my parents weren't defending, like, violence or us, like, hitting other kids or the kid hitting us. They weren't okay. They didn't 
approve of any of that, um, but they thought that the punishments were unfair and the examples they were using like just didn't make sense so my parents weren't like madeline should be allowed to hit whoever she wants like but they were like okay like there's a reason she did this and you can't just put like all this blame on her like should she have known better yeah but so i just want to add that they weren't like let our daughter hit whoever she wants no so funny because they were like madeline hit a kid unprovoked and carter just goes can you blame her though and i was like it's my man that is my man so I had six weeks of alternative school, um, which was kind of bomb. In the beginning, I kind of struggled because we could do our work at our own pace and I would just finish it all and be super bored. But that's when I delved into reading a bunch of Holocaust books. I said I would, in my last story time, I said I would talk about that. So I got to know a lot about the Holocaust. Um, and I wore sweatpants every day for a solid six weeks. Also, I had to ride this short bus, um, but it was fine. It was the bomb. Um, I ended up making a really good friend with a girl there. We got caught passing notes once, but just lied to the teacher. <laughs> um, yeah, and then I got out, and everyone was like, oh, my God, like, she went to alternative school. Like, no one really went to alternative school at our school. Like, so, yeah, um, and then it was really funny. My sophomore year, I ended up having my car taken away, and so I had to ride the bus, and I rode at the front of the bus, and everyone was like, I got the very front where Carter was, but, like, um, where I could monitor everything. It's like when kids would pick on him, I'd be like, do I need to ride the bus? And so we got to use that for a while. Eventually though, it did wear off simply because they got bigger and older and most of the kids are now bigger than me. Um, I'm only 5'2", so I'm pretty short, but. So another fun, fresh thing that happened is that we had to meet with, we didn't have to. So my parents wanted his, he lived with his grandmother, his Travis and his grandmother, and then us to get together. The school would not facilitate it. They're like, we're done with this. I'm still in alternative school. Like, what? Like, you're not done with it. And um, they would not contact, like, the families to get them together. Like, my parents had to ask for the number and, like, call her. It was a big mess. And she ends up coming to our house <laughs> with him. And we're sitting there. Mind you, it's been, like, maybe a week. So I'm still, like, chilling in alternative school, pissed. And this kid was like... Basically, they asked him what happened, and my dad was like, is that true? And we were like, yeah, like, no one was lying about it at this point. Like, there's no point. Um, and in the video footage of the kid hitting Carter, like, we're riding on the bus, and all of a sudden, like, Carter's screaming, because it's kind of a grainy film. I never saw it, but my parents did. Um, and the school is really weird about that, too. And then my dad was like, you know, Travis apologized to Carter, and my dad was like, Maddie, I'd like you to apologize to him. And I was like, I'm sorry for hitting you. And he goes, it's okay, I would have done the same thing. And I was like, cool, then I'm not sorry. <laughs> I was such a B-word at that point. And then him and Carter ended up being friends. Like, I was still in alternative school, and they're, like, riding their bikes together. And it was super funny. My junior or senior year, I don't remember. And um, I was standing in the lunch line, and it's, like, the second day of school. I was aware he was there, but I didn't care. And he just comes up to me and was like, I'm sorry. Mind you, this kid's bigger than me. And then it all got spread around again, how I hit him. And some there's a lot of mixed reviews on my actions among my classmates. Um, and it spread like wildfire because it's such a small school. All the teachers knew. Everyone knew. Like, everyone knew. Parents. It was just a thing. Um, and, yeah, I think from this experience... I learned violence is not always the answer, but sometimes if you hit my sibling, I'm going to hit you back. Um, I know that now that I'm 18, I'm 19 now, <laughs> um, hitting people holds a lot bigger consequences than it did when I was in grade school, and um, I don't, I'm not a violent person now, I wouldn't say that I was then, but um, yeah, I didn't really get in trouble at all the rest of my school career. I've never had ISS. Um, <laughs> but I've had alternative schools. So um, I don't really have, like, some wise life lesson on this. I just have this is something I did, and I'm not sorry. <laughs> I'm 
But I do want to say that my brother, it gave me a lot of credibility with him. Like, he really understood, like, okay, Maddie has got my back, like, no matter what. That will always be my little brother, no matter how big he gets. That is always going to be my little brother. And Elizabeth's always going to be my little sister. And I am always going to stand up for them. And um, there are times where... I mean, should Carter have thrown that water bottle at that kid? No, but I am still gonna like stand up for him and I am still gonna like do what I can. Even though I feel like that kid was, Travis was wrong in the first place. But yeah, I think that being a sibling, especially an older sibling or the oldest sibling, um, it's important to be there. It's important to be um, a, role, a role model, but sometimes being a role model means doing something that isn't necessarily right like hitting that kid if I wanted to be a perfect role model I wouldn't have done that and I would have talked to him calmly but um I think there's a fine line between being a good role model and doing what you have to do it's kind of like I don't even know what it's like it's you know it's my parents if they were on that school bus could not have walked up and hit that kid where I could and so I feel like that's why as an older sibling I have like more I can handle things differently than my parents can or even as a sibling in general and if you're the younger sibling you have to band together because that's your family and um, those are your people and one day if they do it for you it's gonna it's gonna come in handy so yeah um, these were my story times so be sure to like them if you found them interesting let me know if you guys had any crazy high school experiences um, also, be sure to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Um, subscribe. I feel like I just keep saying the same thing. I hope to see you guys in the next video. Bye.